Alan Bryant worked on security during preparations for the Great Escape. The desire to get out was a very strong one, because you realised this was going to be your prison for an unknown length of time. That's the thing which horrified me more than anything. This is really the end of life, really. The only consolation was that you've got 2,000 other chaps from <laughs> the same boat together. Huts were raised off the ground so that the German guards could spot any tunnelling activity, and they were built away from the perimeter fence, so tunnels would have to be even longer. But this didn't deter tunnellers like Jimmy James, who had already made 10 escape attempts before being moved to Stalag Luft III. He is one of only seven people left alive who broke out on the night of the Great Escape. You were not out of the war. You were still fighting for your country. You were in uniform. And although you went in the firing line, it was still your duty to carry the war on as best you could. In the early days, escapes were spontaneous, random events. Later, men like Walter Morrison became part of a well-organized team planning breakouts. When I arrived at the Sterling Luft III, discipline was almost non-existent, and if you had an idea for escape, you did it. And one scheme would get in the way of another, and, and they both would be discovered. Things changed with the arrival of Roger Bushell. He had much grander ambitions. His escape plan involved 200 men breaking out on a single night. You can straighten that out uh, flat and make uh, uh, join them together.